In this clip, we'll wrap up this course by learning how to work with multi-tile textures inside of our Maya shading networks. Okay, so this is going to be the module 4, clip 6, begin file. If you want to open this up, it'll be inside your exercise files. So just to show you really quickly before we start, inside this particular scene, I have two materials created, but neither one of those is for the little crab creature. So, as I mentioned previously, if you're manually exporting your textures out of Mari, instead of using that MGO plugin to send them automatically over to Maya, then you will need to actually manually create your shading network. Now, I am using the older version of Arnold again. If we come down here to About, you'll see that I'm using the Arnold Core 4.2.14. So, this means that we are going to be working with the AI standard. Let's go ahead and create one inside of Maya's Hypershade. You can find that shader down here in the Arnold rollout underneath Surface Shaders, and there is the AI standard. And there we go. Now, remember, if you have any custom attributes set inside the shader in Mari, maybe it's your specular color, maybe it's your specular weight, anything that's not being driven by a texture input, then those are settings that you'll need to manually transfer over to this new shader inside of Maya. And we'll need to go ahead and manually create a file node. Those file nodes are under 2D textures, and right there, file. So this file node is what's going to connect to each one of our textures inside of Maya. So in Mari, those would be channels. In Maya, we're going to connect those textures that we output to a file node. We can come over here and click the yellow folder to browse to the location. You can see I've browsed to the location where I save those inside my exercise files. I'll just select the diffuse.1001.tiff texture, and I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Now notice here, before I hit open, you can't shift select inside this dialog. You can only select one particular image. So if we were to click open on that one, you'll see that it links to that file here inside this path field. And at this point, we could come over and just middle click and drag that over into the color for the AI standard. Now let's give the AI standard a more uh, relevant name. Let's call it something like crab creature, something like that. And if we came over here inside of our viewport, selected a piece of the crab and tap the up arrow key to select the group, we can right click and assign that material. Just like so. Now, if I were to come in here and render this out at this point, we'll just go ahead and launch the Arnold render view. You can see here that in doing so, well, something is definitely wrong. You can see here that the texture looks right here, but the texture is way off here, 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 anything that's not basically the main body of the crab. So remember, we have six different UDIMs in Mari, six different patches that represent all of the pieces of this creature. And essentially what we're doing inside of our Maya shading network is we're taking the very first patch and we're applying it to each of the patches. So that's why the texture doesn't look very good here because it's one, not the right texture. So let's come back over here into our Maya shading network and let's select our file node. There's one really important change that we need to make inside the file node, and that's to turn the UV tiling mode from the default value of off, we'll need to come over here and set this over to UDIM, and in parentheses it will say Mari. So what this does is it changes up the way Maya looks for the different naming schemes that are common between those applications, and it has found the UDIM number inside the path that we had browsed to. And notice what it has done here. It has replaced that UDIM number with this bit of text. This says bracket UDIM bracket. Great. So because of this, if we were to come back over here and set off another render, we'll go ahead and let Maya think about it. Remember, it's actually going through the process of converting each of those textures into TX files in the background. And you can see here, now our textures are starting to look better. We have the correct texture showing up on the little 
legs of our crab as well as his body. So it's just that simple to use a multi-tile texturing workflow with Maya's file node. So let me just bring up the hypershade again here. You can see there are some other limited controls related to this here, related to preview quality. And if you change that, you can click this red generate preview button to update things. But you would need to come in here and manually create a file node for each one of our textures. In this case, it would be for the normal map and for the specular roughness map. Now, there is one other workflow that potentially you may be using if you're a longtime Arnold user. And instead of using Maya's file node, you may become may have become accustomed to using the AI image node. Now, that is right down here under the Arnold rollout under texture and AI image. Now, really, this AI image node serves kind of the same purpose as Maya's file node. We're going to link a texture right here in this image name field. And instead of having a browse button, we actually need to paste a path. So in this case, we'll go ahead and hit control V to paste in that exact same path. And I'll just add a little bit of information here. We'll go ahead and hit a backspace. I'll type in diffuse dot and the same syntax open bracket UDIM closed bracket dot TIF just like so and you can see now if we were to come over here and replace that connection with this AI image node just like so and we were to come over here and render this out what we should see is that the correct textures appear in the correct place with this particular change to our shading network so and you can see that is the case. We have the correct textures being displayed on the correct pieces of geometry here. Now, ultimately, it's up to you as to which workflow you use. I've been using Maya's file node for quite some time, and it works just fine. So I'm going to continue using that. So it's really a user preference thing. But this is how you would use a multi-tile texturing workflow inside of Maya with Mari Textures. And this is actually going to bring us to the end of this course dedicated to establishing a texturing pipeline between Mari and Maya. I hope you've learned a few things and you've picked up some tips that can help you improve your own efficiency in working back and forth between these two applications. Thanks for joining me.